Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching Hard Copy coming to you from our studios in Abuja. Our guest tonight is Professor Tunde Adeniro, a founding father of the People's Democratic Party and a former Nigerian ambassador to Germany. Now, Prof, one of your party stalwarts, um, in fact, the governor of your state, uh, Mr. Ayodili Fayoshi, has thrown his hat into the ring. He's declared uh, to run for president come 2019 in negation of your party's zoning formula. How important is zoning to your party, considering that you know this is happening? Zoning is very important to the party mm -hmm. because when you look at the constitution of our party and our manifestos and so on, we want an inclusive administration. And we want an inclusive involvement in the management of the party and, of course, in governance. That is why we've been endorsing and be practicing and be promoting this idea of uh, zoning. It is very important. And if you look at what has, those of us who have been key participants and very keen observers of Nigerian's political process, we realize that we have realized over the years that there are certain innate tendencies, certain idiosyncrasies, which affect the political preferment of people within various zones of the country. And when we ignore this, we ignore this at our own peril. So do you think that is why we felt that, look, once we zone out, it helps the situation so that everybody will have a sense of belonging. Uh, you know, my brother's coming out and so forth. I think that is some drama, you know, little detraction. Drama? Uh, yes. It's not something that it will last, you know, because he knows and everybody knows in the party that the presidential candidate of the party will come from the north. Doesn't it have and the capacity to endanger the zoning formula if it's accepted? Because there are a number of people who have also said uh, they don't believe in zoning. No, 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 no. It will not endanger the zoning formula because the key people, the, most of the people in the party, most of them are aware that we have to respect zoning. There's nothing short of that. Has, he, en the, has he endorsed your campaign for chairmanship of the party? My campaign, mm -hmm. the, what I've been doing is, is, is delegate election. And I've been going around canvassing, promoting my candidacy, telling people what I can offer them, what will be the impact of my chairmanship of the party, mm -hmm. and what I will bring to the table for the party from the Nigerian nation. Have you marketed the, to him? Oh, yes. I reach out to everybody. Has he endorsed it? I'm not, you know, after individual or particular endorsement, I'm interested in support. He is a delegate, and I would like to, him to also vote for me. So most of the people that I've been talking to, they've been promising and so on. And as far as uh, he is concerned, I know that after he is facing his presidential issue, when he knows and he's been convinced that, look, uh, this thing should stop. And I'm sure by the time it's getting nearer, he will share that and then embrace uh, you know, the, the, the party position. He is a chairman of the governance forum, and he knows the implications of trying to go against the decision of the forum of which he is chairman, mm. and of course is a key player in the, in the party. Mm. So we, we, we believe that he is going to fall in line. Prof, in fairness to you, now no one has accused you of corruption or misappropriation. You've kept a pretty clean sheet even in your time as a public servant. However, there was one uncomfortable moment for you when you were uh, rejected. Your appointment to the United States as an ambassador was rejected by the U.S. over allegations linked to your son. What precisely happened? Well, at uh, that time, you know, once we are in politics, my own approach has always been, as a public officer, your life is an open book. People will look here and there and so forth. And I've learned to be transparent in whatever I'm doing. I've been very open. So when the controversy happened, even though he is an adult and then he could face it, there was, uh, I investigated, I realized that he was set up on something. And then when the controversy started, I said, look, as far as I'm concerned, I don't want any distraction. So this uh, nomination, even though I've been confirmed by Senate at that time, the agreement had come in uh, July. By September, I discussed with the uh, president, former president, uh, and I said, look, I don't want any distraction for your administration or for me as a person. I know what I will do for this country if I go there, but then the nation must come first. As far as I'm concerned, I will not want to insist on going. I don't want this. Uh, he said, look, why do you want No, no, I will withdraw from it, and I wrote on the 10th of September, 
2009, you know, asking him to please excuse me. But I was withdrawing from the nomination, and that I did. Uh, painfully, he accepted the idea with me well, and also insisted that, well, I shouldn't be far from him. Have you, have you been able to clear the controversy? Because it was also about your, your name. No, no, no. It has, of course, it was cleared. I mean, it cleared in the sense that I did not just stop at that. Since then, it has been discovered that, you know, what uh, the, the three of them were supposed to have been involved, and uh, we discovered that it was a setup. then. The thing went to court. And what I have also done thereafter is that by the time I was writing the book, uh, Serving My Fatherland, I made sure that I devoted a whole chapter to it because the public deserves to know what happened at that time, what went wrong, and we must never at any time take the public for granted. And anybody who aspires to serve the public must be ready for open and full disclosure at any particular time. If you read chapter 13 of my book, Serving My Fatherland, it's on it as American I mean, ambassador designate to the U.S. Everything that happened there is contained there, the various correspondences and, of course, you know, my decision and so on. So that is it. And particularly based on my background and experience, I know what uh, the, the implications. Mm. Just wondering now, who's given impetus then to your vying for chairmanship of the people? Who are the, who are the people who are supporting you? Usually you hear the people have backers. Do you have any backers? I have backers. Who are the they? The masses of the PDP all over the country. They are the ones backing me. I no. have no godfather within the party. Mm -hmm. I have no money back to run to. I have backers. The backers are there. Not even and former president of Asanjo, whom you served as I, minister? I have a number one backer, mm -hmm. who is God Almighty. And whatever a decrease will be, the, you mentioned the president of Basanjo, I have heard over, uh, over the months, they will say, okay, when they see that the people are trooping, that uh, my uh, you know, uh, candidacy is welling in terms of popularity and so forth. They say, oh, there must be some. If today they don't say it is IBB, you know, General Babangida, they will say it is uh, you know, uh, former Vice President Atiku with whom we sat together, or they will say your passenger. They will even mention some individuals and so on who they believe must be rich and that, uh, must be those who are backing me. But I have God on my side and the people, because I relate with them. And within the party, I'm one person who I do not discriminate. Mm -hmm. No matter what position you occupy in the party, no matter what you are doing, I make sure that I try to cultivate you to toe the line that we promote the interest so of yes the party. So yes or no, these people whose names you've mentioned are yes. not backing you? They are not backing me, but I need their support because they are also, to some extent, gatekeepers mm. to certain interest groups. And I want them to please reach out. Now that uh, people are mentioning their names and so forth, I want them to reach out to their friends and associates all over Nigeria who are members of the PDP to tell their delegates that, look, Tundi Adeniran is the man to elect as the national chairman well, who will do justice in the party and win the presidency and other elections. Well, we've totally run out of time, Prof. We have to thank you for coming on Hard Copy. Thank you very much. Well, that's the program tonight, but what are your thoughts? Do you think the PDP stands a chance come 2019? Email us on hardcopy at channelstv.com or send us your tweet using the handle on your screen. Thank you for watching tonight. I'm Mao Peogon. Good night.